Performing backups is a crucial task in managing the state of your system, but if not implemented properly, this will lead to full compromise. In this video, I will show you a technique on how to perform privilege escalation using sync and backup method. Let's say we have the following pseudo permission that allows us to run this script as root. If we open this, it is a program used for backing up files. It accepts a JSON file as input. Then there is a variable that defines what are the paths we can back up. There is also this command that extracts the directories you want to archive using JQ. The input file is quoted, which means we cannot perform command injection here. In typical scenario, what we might do is to create a file with a malicious name. But it will not be possible in this case since the variable is quoted which prevents shell injection. So we need to find another attack vector. Going back to the script, we see that once it extracted directories to archive, it overwrites the input file with that new information. Then it stores those directories inside another variable. It has a function that checks the allowed paths. And it exits the script if it detected any. If all is good, it will execute this command. So, let's see if there is anything vulnerable with that binary. It is owned by root meaning we cannot modify it to insert malicious code. If we execute it without any parameters, we see the binary version. Let's do a quick Google search. On the first hit, we see a GitHub page, so let's open that. It is a utility for backing up files which aligns on what we saw from the machine. The input file looks like this. It defines the destination which where the backups will be sent. There is a verbose log setting which we can turn on if we need to troubleshoot. Then we see here a list of directories to sync. Maybe this utility can function similar to rsync? We will find out later. And here we see the list of directories to archive. This should be the actual data being backed up. Lastly, there is a setting that allows to exclude a set of files. Let's try creating the input file. First, let's change the paths we want to back up. Let's say we want to back up all files of all users, so let's put the whole slash home here. Then next is to specify the backup destination. Since we will run this under sudo, the destination will be located under root's home directory and we won't be able to see the files. So let's change this to something we can access. I think that's all we need, so let's run this. Let's check the backup file. The destination directory is not there, so let's try to create it first. And run again. This time it is successful. If we list the contents, we see all files from all users. Let's extract this. And check whether we own all files even from other users. To do that, we need to pass the user parameter to find command and negate the condition. If this returns nothing, meaning we own all files, yes, we are right on our assumption. To verify, let's find all files and do a long listing to see the permissions. Confirmed, we have access to everything, and we can read the sensitive files from other users. So the question is, how are we going to do this for other parts of the file system if it only allows slash home and slash var? Going back to the input file, we know that aside from the directories to archive, we also have the option to sync a source directory to another directory. So let's see what happens if we try to sync slash root to slash temp. We'll run same command. We see slash root here, but the problem is we don't have permission to access it. It is different from the archive functionality where the file ownership changes to our user once we extract the files. So that means the sync functionality preserves the original permission of the source. Given the following constraints, the logical step would be first to perform a sync of slash root to home martin. Then after that, we trigger the archive functionality to backup home martin to slash temp. As a result, once we extract the tarball containing root's home directory, the extracted permissions will be changed to our user. To do that, we need two input files. First is the one for syncing slash root into our home directory. Let's name the destination as home martin synced. Then another input file that will archive the content of home martin synced to slash temp. Let's run the sync task first. It is successful as we see root's home directory here. Now let's do the archive task. It is successful also because we see the tarball on the destination. Let's see the contents to confirm it is not corrupted. Looks good. We see root.txt. Now let's extract this. The root home directory is now owned by our user. 
and we can read the root.txt. This means we successfully hijacked the root home directory. We can leverage this attack to read other parts of the file system, like slash etc. In that manner, we would be able to see the password hashes and possibly crack them. Before ending the video, let's quickly check why the attack is successful. The sync functionality is using rsync. If you notice here, it is using archive mode. In that mode, the permissions are preserved. That's the reason why when we sync slash root, we cannot access the contents because the permissions are still owned by root. Now, the backup functionality is different. It is using tar. By default, if an ordinary user extracts the content of a tar file, regardless on who owns the file inside, the extracted file's ownership will be changed to the user who extracted it. This type of attack is common in CTF challenges. You might see custom scripts that will perform backups. If you will be able to run tar's root, that means you will be able to archive any parts of the file system, extract the tarball, and access the contents as your user. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.